<laughs> okay. Welcome to Hear Me Out Podcast. Hear Me Out Entertainment. I am your co-host, Brooks. And today I have with me a very special guest from the MCSC Network, Misty from Facts on the Ground Podcast, also the host of Bitch on YouTube. Misty, what's up? How's it going, man? Thanks for having me. Thanks for Thanks for coming on. Uh, before we really get started, just let us know about Facts on the Ground and, and Bitch also. I know Bitch is kind of like your uh, your ranting show, just where you That's get to talk fun. about whatever. But <laughs> yeah. Facts on the Ground and, and Bitch. Yeah, so Facts on the Ground is a show I have with my friend Jesse Zerowell. Um, We just like try to interview cool people who are smart and know more than we do um, about things that interest us. Um, so it, it's, it, it's not really all that... Um, structured, I guess we don't have, like, we just kind of fly by the seat of our pants. Um, but we've talked to people like Vanessa Beely. Um, we've talked to, um, Steve Cox. We've talked, I mean, just a bunch of people all across the board. Um, we just talked to Tara Reed last night, which was really fun. Um, she has a new book out. So we were talking to her about that. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a fun show. And then bitch is something that uh, kind of started as a joke. Um, and it was actually kind of a joke that, um, I like, don't like anybody. <laughs> which sounds terrible, but it means like politicians, people in power. I don't like any of them. Um, so we were going to do like a segment on Steve's show on slow news day, uh, called fuck your faves with comrade Misty. Um, and, uh, that's something we did like segments of or whatever. Uh, but then we just decided, or I just decided it was like very, like within 36 hours, I like joked about it. And then 36 hours later, I had like it all set up. <laughs> so, um, it really is just like every Wednesday at seven, I just have somebody on, um, and we just complain about whatever is pissing us off that week. Week. and it's fun That's good and yeah for today's shows you can have on sky sky and, and fee sky and fee so it's going to be a power hour show with those three <laughs> powerhouse women guys if you're interested go ahead and watch that and include the uh the link in our bio for that show um with that being said man misty comrade misty is a college football fan like a lot of us is are i should say uh she's an ohio state buckeyes fan unfortunately i i didn't tell you this before but <laughs> I'm a, I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan, so you can oh, imagine. Oh, okay. Yeah, you probably don't have. like me very much. <laughs> you're going to have a beef because of that. Was it the 0-2 oh, oh, championship? With yeah, the, I think it was 2002. Pa- with the pass interference play that happened there. <laughs> I was only seven years old. Yeah. But at the time, I was still kind of mad about it. It is what it is. <laughs> Missy, it's like you, you, you've you been programmed to be mad about that. <laughs> That's well, what it is. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But, Let's, let's go with this. Ohio State Buckeyes, the future's looking bright for this team. What are you thinking? What are you expecting for this upcoming season? I'm super excited. Um, we had like a really good recruiting. Club. I mean, there's just so much going on. I think it's we, like with COVID last year and not really. I mean, we had a season, but it was weird as shit. Um, and it like we couldn't go to games and I go to games. I've been to a game every year for I don't know a while, a long time, probably like 10 years. And so it was really depressing to not be able to go to any games and then to not have fans in the stadium during a game, like even watching it on TV, it changed the atmosphere. It was just really bizarre. So I'm like, I think extra fired up for this year because of that. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited about this year. Ryan Day is doing an amazing job. I will um, ha- I'll, I'll, like put a confession um, out there. I was skeptical of Ryan Day. <laughs> I feel really bad now for having doubted him. Um, why were you? But, why were you? Because uh, ex- I'm. Skeptical? That's just my nature. I think. Right. Um, I, I'm always like, whenever there's a change or there's somebody new or whatever, I side eye everybody. Um, and so, you know, I side eyed Urban Meyer when he came on board, cause I didn't like him because he was the Florida coach. You can imagine my beef with Urban Meyer right. after they killed us in the national championship game. Right. So, I mean, he came on board and I was like side eyeing him, um, which is crazy. Cause he's Urban Meyer. I mean, the dude produces, um, but yeah, so I feel bad for having doubted him, but he's doing an unbelievable job. He's so good. He really is. He's great. So who are you expecting to to replace Justin Fields there? The uh, Heisman finalist. You know, I don't know. There's there's been like a really interesting battle for that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who who, who ends up getting it. Um, I think that you know, I missed the spring game this year, which makes me sad because um I don't even know if they had fans this year in it do you I don't, you probably don't know i'm sure probably it was different ac- across the country but yeah i'm just because i usually the spring games are always fun i think to go to um it gives you kind of a sense of what you're looking at on the team um so yeah i don't know i'm, I'm really excited for this year we have like uh 
you know, just a lot, a lot of new stuff to watch for. Um, and I, I think what I'm most excited about is just having stand, like fans back in the stands. Um, because I miss that the roar of the, and the, uh, like, Oh, H I O all through the stadium. Right. That's always so much fun. And the, the band was never playing and it just wasn't college football last year. Um, so I'm really, I'm pumped. Are all the, are all the teams having fans back in the stands? Cause I that's think like, most, I think most okay. people are getting ready to bring fans back. I think it'll probably be limited capacity if at all. Yeah. I know for Maryland, cause you know, I, I love, not up the street, but I live like right up the street, really from uh, UMD. So I know they're still trying to figure out the plans for bringing fans in for basketball and football stuff, but it's, it's going to be a fun season. The big time football is always pretty good. Always fun to watch. I'll admit to wanting to go the horseshoe. That's like on my bucket list of. Oh, football let me tell you, um, even if, even if you're not an Ohio state fan, I highly recommend it. I would like to go to different stadiums, like different. I mean, there, it, it, there's a lot of tradition and the, I can tell you that watching the band do script Ohio in person is kind of breathtaking. It's so good. <laughs> it is. I mean, they say it all the time, military precision, but you, uh, like on camera, it just does not do it justice. And then watching their halftime shows, um, they're kind of legendary. I mean, they made Michael Jackson moonwalk across the field, the band, like individual band members created a Michael Jackson on the field and made a moonwalk. That's I mean, awesome. they're fucking incredible. They really are. I highly recommend going and watching videos of them. If you've never really paid much attention to the band. Um, and I, it's always, it always gives me goosebumps watching them do script Ohio. It's really kind of cool. And I love it when we have um, uh, like alumni week um, because the band, the alumni band will come and they'll usually do four like smaller script Ohio's uh, on like each end of the field. And Ohio it's really State cool. alum for you. Yeah. Huh, what's that? Are you an Ohio State alum? No, 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 no. I mean, when we have alumni week and the band comes back. Oh yeah. No, I'm like saying, there, but did alum- you go? Did you no, graduate no, no, from no, that? no, 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 nope, okay. nope. Nope, just born and raised in Columbus. So I've gotcha. been drenched in the stuff. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Since birth. <laughs> with Ohio State on the mind, I know with this playoff expansion that Ohio State's one of the, if not the one team that's uh, eligible for the 12 team for like the entire playoff uh, mm-hmm. selection, they are one of. But with this playoff expansion, we're going from four to 12. Um, it seems they're going to have a vote tomorrow and Friday, but with this 12 team expansion, do you think it's going to hurt or going to help college football playoffs? Oh, that's kind of a loaded question. Cause it has its pros and its cons. I think with anything, um, you know, the, first of all, one of the pros, my favorite thing is that it, it kind of screws Notre Dame over <laughs> if they stay independent and I don't like Notre Dame. So that just makes me happy. No one um, should. You know, because they're independent. And so what happens is, is the top, um, four, uh, conference winners get a bye week in the first week. Um, and because Notre Dame isn't in a conference, they, they could never finish higher than fifth. Um, no matter what they could be undefeated, like best schedule ever. Um, and they would still only be able to finish fifth. So that like, just personally on a personal level makes me happy. (laughs) Um, but you know, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot, like it's kind of taking it more towards like the NFL, Um, And some people are hesitant about that because a lot of like, you're going to find one of two things, people who feel very strongly against it or very strongly for it. There's, I don't know. I'm kind of in the middle Um, because there's a lot to really break down. Um, You know, I think that it'll, I think that college football has a lot of problems if you're looking at it, like as a business, which you kind of have to, that's what it is. But I think college football was facing a lot of problems and COVID didn't help. And I think that this is like an attempt to like fix things, but I think that there's a lot of things that could backfire. Yeah, I think so too. Well, one of the main things, like you said, Notre, if you're an independent, you can't get higher than a fifth seed. Um, there is no guarantees for conference champions anymore. Whoever is the high, the highest ranked conference champions throughout the season are uh are automatic top four seeds i believe mm-hmm. six highest and there's no other- cap i do like the fact that there's no cap from a conference you can have as many um teams in the playoff from your conference as makes that's sense. my that's one of my problems though is because really see i like that we, we all I know like that the that. sec is gonna get 
biased because of that because you know they're for the sure top, they're but the top, there's been times the i think just looking at it from like a, a an objective perspective um i think it was like 2000 oh i'm not gonna get the year right but michigan was it 2014 maybe um no i don't think it was uh but michigan and ohio state were one and two and um the fact that michigan got left out of being in the playoffs because they weren't, you know what I mean? Like, it, there's just a lot that there's there's been a lot of times where teams have been left out that should have been in because their conference was already, you know? And so it's, it, that to me has always just seemed kind of weird. Like it should just be the best teams, but you're right. The SEC will probably, well, will definitely get <laughs> favoritism as they do. That That's going to be the case no matter what, you know? Yeah. So that's just how it is. That is just how it is. I mean, <laughs> but the, it's, it just seems, because I, I thought they should have done it maybe a year or two ago ex- expanding it to at least eight or maybe even 12 yeah 12 seems like a great fit you, you're gonna have the 12 best 12 best quote-unquote uh college football teams yeah. in these playoff expansions uh, and i do like that it'll kind of actually help the the conference championship game mean something again because right yeah. now it doesn't really um it you know you can still lose your, do you know what I mean? So I think it's going to kind of make it more important now for people to actually win their conference game. It's going to make the regular season, I think, just more aggressive. Do you you know what I'm saying? Do you think this helps the ACC or in the Pac-12? Because, well, no one one gets to watch a Pac-12 game anymore and then the ACC gets laughed at, but does that help those two conferences? Um, I don't know. I don't know. And like, what about the G5? Like, um, I don't know. I, I don't know because I hate making predictions on this because <laughs> it really is going to, it's going to be interesting to watch it play out. Um, when we went to the playoff from BCS, I think that that was an interesting, I didn't, I wasn't really sure how that was going to play out. I always thought four teams was weird. That seems like a very small number. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like it, it that makes because the there's same always four teams every yes, season, it's here. the same four teams every season. And like once you get to November, nobody's paying attention anymore. Everybody knows who's going. Um, it's always the same four teams. There's no like drama. There's no excitement. But now there's going to be like 25 to 30 teams who are in the mix of things. Do you know what I mean? So that, mm-hmm. that makes it more exciting. That makes those November games more makes them mean something like if you lose now there's you you have to be uh, you know careful about there's you know 25 30 teams who are looking to take your spot so um i think that that that'll be nice i think that that like excitement that it'll bring back to the game because some of that you're i mean some of that has really been lost um because it's always 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 alabama ohio state clemson oklahoma um, and then there's like, maybe like a, a fifth team that bounces in and out, but the, you know, that's not very exciting. It, I don't get pumped about that stuff. I mean, I still watch Ohio state games, but it's like, I don't really care because I know who's going to the playoffs and all the bowl games are kind of meaningless. <laughs> so, and I think they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do as far as the bowl games too. Cause you know, you're going to have the new year six games. You got, mm-hmm. you know, Chick-fil-A orange bowl, um, cotton bowl sugar whatever it may be do you think those games do you think those bowl games are going to be part of the playoffs or do you think they're going to lose their meaning um what's That's your prediction question with that too one? i don't know i i think i don't know those games have always been kind of a big deal um just traditionally so maybe it, it'll be fine i don't i don't know if it'll hurt those games or um that is kind of interesting to think about because so much is going to change um, just on like, just on its face. It's going to be uh, an interesting, but the, I think we, the, like the soonest we can see this is in two years, right? 2023. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 2023, 2024. Yeah. I think that they need, if they're going to do it, they need to do it fast. Like they can't like talk about this for years and, you know, cause they've been talking about it for a long time. And I think that, they need to move on it as fast as they can. If we know um, one thing about the NCAA, they do like to take their time. They do. With a lot of things, man. It's, <laughs> Mark Emmert needs to go. Yeah. He needs to go yesterday. Um, and I don't I don't know if you're an NBA fan, but there's a lot of NBA mm-hmm. stuff going on today. Our, Is there? Our, our I'm basketball not coach sure. for the Washington Wizards, he lost his job. I don't like oh. I don't like to cheer for those type of things, but like he was terrible. It's a whole lot of things going on and Change is just not one of those things that happens with the NCAA very well. No, 
No, not really. I will say that this will probably help protect a lot of coaches jobs um, because it won't be now, um, you know, you, you didn't get in the, play- you know what I mean? It'll open the playoffs up to more teams, which, you know, will help coaches, you know, bolster their resumes a little bit if they make it into a playoff game. So I think Especially that it'll for a probably team like Michigan, right? Michigan <laughs> continues to mess around and not do what they're supposed to do. Even Michigan needs Ohio to State. figure their shit out. I'm not even kidding around. Listen, I'm an Ohio State fan and I do not like Michigan. I don't think anybody would, you know, be surprised by me saying that, but they need to get their shit together. We need them. Like them sucking ass for the last decade has really not been helpful to us at all. Um, we can't carry the damn conference fans. Get it together. <laughs> get it together exactly, exactly. you know I seriously know like else. i miss i miss that game being exciting um you know when it's like 42 to 39 and we're ranked one and two in the country at the time that shit was awesome it gave me heart attacks and i would throw stuff and cuss a lot but it was the, that's fun they suck it's so bad god who is it john harbaugh harbaugh's a <laughs> michigan coach right yeah i love him actually he's like the best player ohio state's ever had <laughs> so yeah the guy just needs it, i don't know why they don't fire him what what does he have on them seriously this will get me fired up because what does he have on them this I dude really still has no a idea. job and he, he can't possible? be at ohio state and he can't get them back to their traditional glory or anything like that it's i just don't know why michigan too. keeps him around i would have fired him three four years ago easy he must have something on the ad or something maybe like they they've joked in the past about giving him like a lifetime contract what are you talking about no like he no i mean i joke that he's like the best player we've ever had because like he's made it very easy for us to just roll over them at the end of every year and that's great but seriously we need them to be good like it would be much more helpful if they were actually decent um you know they don't have to be good enough to beat us but if they could just be decent that'd be fine you know and jim harbaugh is terrible i mean people will still defend him though it's kind of amazing it is and it, well it's in this mainly of course the Michigan fans but then it's like Big Ten fans I guess I don't know but moving on <laughs> to the next thing because we're gonna we can, we can talk about Michigan and their failures I could go on and on all day <laughs> one of the- my guy or gal thanks for watching this video don't forget to like subscribe comment hit the notification bell and share this video for the latest on sports progressive politics and pop culture